Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Nick here, and we're finally doing another fight analysis video on a Tekken series character. The purpose of this video is to look at their fighting style, break down the techniques used, identify what is real, what's not real, identify what's maybe used for gameplay purposes, and then also do a light breakdown and how these characters would fight in real life. So in today's video, we are breaking down the Valetito fighting style of Craig Mardock. This video was recommended by Ev or Evie. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you very much for this recommendation. If you guys have any recommendations for me on other characters that you would like to see, please let me know in the comment section below. Okay guys, so I coach BJJ. I'm a BJJ purple belt and I coach amateur boxing. I'm also a former pro wrestler, so I'm gonna do my best to identify everything here. I might not be the best person for the job, and I'm just gonna say this now, that an MMA coach would be able to break this down better than myself. Hey, I just love martial arts and fighting games. So, and without further ado, let's get into it. Get ready for the, ready next, for the battle. next battle. All right, so big physical specimens of human beings. They will always be very dangerous. They can get away with less technique. So what greater way to emphasize this is with flashy, unrealistic moves where they can literally fling their opponents like a rag doll. Yeah, it, this just shows you like what sort of monster Craig Mordock is. This is what training Valetito, lifting a hell of a lot of weights and all them steroids can do. There's no need to go into further details with these moves because they are there just for the gameplay and to make things flashy for the character. Woo! The moves out of aggression. Now these are a few unorthodox moves that would, you know, make people vulnerable or catch them off guard. You know, anything with like a simple pushback can put people off onto their heels and make them off balance. Double thrust, ah, something that, you know, when somebody's guards up is not going to expect. Striking with the shoulder, ah, that's been done before. I mean, we've seen it in the previous Conor McGregor fight, right? These are all just unorthodox, aggressive moves that can throw opponents off guard. And of course, leaving them vulnerable for, you know, more legit ways of ending the fight. Did you know that pro wrestling and MMA have a very intertwined history together in Japan? So it's with no surprise that, you know, a Japanese company that develops a game will have pro wrestling moves for a Balotito MMA style fighter. Even though that Craig Mardock has participated in the pro wrestling circuit in Tekken Law, this would actually add very little to his style of fighting. Realistically speaking, some pro wrestling moves can work in a real fight because they are based off real fighting moves. Don't believe me? Go check out some early Pride FC stuff. Go check out Pat and Chris. In fact, if you just type into YouTube right now, pro wrestling moves in MMA, you'll see what exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but let's not forget that Pancrase and Pride FC has a history of fixing fights. So, therefore they are actually works and not shoots. Is pro wrestling real? Is MMA fake? What's going on? But seriously, check out the history. It's a very interesting one. You'll find out things about shoot fighting, catches, catch can wrestling. The history is very, very intriguing. I highly recommend you looking it up. But in this case here for Craig Mardock, it's just to emphasize his strength and athleticism. Because it's using all the fancy pro wrestling moves that wouldn't actually work in a fight. If you want me to cover more on this topic with the history of MMA and pro wrestling together in Japan, please let me know. Comment sections down there. Ooh. 
Ooh, the Valetido pod. Okay, so Valetido originated in Brazil. Valetido is Portuguese for anything goes. And quite literally, anything goes. It's basically MMA with fewer rules. But over the years, they have incorporated more rules to make it safer for the fighters and to make it more mainstream, thanks to the popularity of MMA. But there used to be a hell of a lot of underground organizations, and still probably are. Think of UFC 1 as a good example. When I was young, and you know, we had just started out browsing on the internet, and you know, being fans of martial arts and MMA, here in South Africa it was very difficult to watch MMA stuff. But you know, we found a site called Rio Heroes. Bare knuckle, few rules, and of course, intergender fights. That's right, men versus women. I still remember my friend introducing me to this. Like, hey bro, have you seen this shit? But once again, you can't expect anything less from these shady underground organizations. And of course, you can't expect anything more. Classy entertainment indeed. So, how does this fit in with Craig Mardock's fighting style? Well, downward elbows, dirty boxing, kneeing in the back of the head, and of course, pinning his opponent in mount and grabbing his head and smashing it onto the floor. To be honest, I think that's the most deadly part of his fighting style. I mean, if you grab somebody and smash the back of their head onto the ground, you can kill them. This is why shots to the back of the head isn't allowed in most combat sports, because you need to look after the fighters. There has been many recorded cases where people have fell and hit their head, back of their head on the ground and died. And there has been serious cases in the past of, you know, punches being thrown in the back of the head, which even resulted in death. This has been recorded. So that makes it, that makes it dangerous. But when guys say, oh no, too many rules, because we'll crouch eyes and stuff. Motherfucker, please, if you're getting the back of your head bashed in, you can get killed. Now we are finally getting into the meat of the topic. Let's cover the striking. Starting with the stance, he has a very upright stance ready to strike, but also if you see his feet, how it's staggered and how his hips are squared out, he's ready to defend against takedowns. With his hand, one hand forward, one hand back, ready to strike, ready to grapple. This also gives him a jab hand and a power hand. With him being as tall as he is, having a jab hand could be a very effective tool. Uh, he has the ability to control the range a bit better. By the looks of it, his striking influences are dirty boxing and kickboxing and Muay Thai. Dirty boxing because there's a lot of hooks, elbows and knees being thrown. So the main reason why I say dirty boxing is because Craig Mardock overturns his knees when he punches, therefore fully dedicating to them. This isn't something you'll necessarily do when setting up kicks. Throw. Muay Thai, because he's got a lot of elbows, there's some downward elbows there, and knee strikes. You can see the Muay Thai kickboxing influences there with the spinning back fist and the spinning back kick. Looks like he follows the dirty boxing aspect of striking a bit more because he utilizes low kicks in combination with big hooks, overhands, and of course, short range elbows. With the cheeky knee here and there. And when I say cheeky, I mean really powerful in your gut. But also another reason why I say dirty boxing is because getting very close to utilize wrestling. He comes in with the punches, closing the distance, using more short range strikes, like elbows and knees, and then of course level change, which can set up the takedown, which we'll cover in a bit, or fake the takedown, come up with a knee, uppercut, or overhand. And these are the strikes that get really devastating. So basically, I would think he would use a lot of the dirty boxing to walk somebody down, close the distance, just so that he can start utilizing that wrestling. Because obviously, if you've got a good double leg and you're the bigger, stronger guy, you like in a Tekken tournament where majority of the people are going to be shorter than you. They're not going to defend against that size trying to take you down, especially if you're very well trained in that aspect of wrestling. Most likely use that dirty boxing to walk his opponent down, close the distance and set up the double leg and take him down from there. Which leads us to our next part.
So Craig Murdoch's entire grappling game is majority wrestling. He's got two submissions. Well, according to the booklet, it's Valetido, so there shouldn't be an emphasis on submissions. How the hell can you say his fighting style is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu when he knows two submissions? Which is the spinning knee bar and that top headlock. That headlock being a guillotine type of variant. With the striking involved, using that to close the distance. Craig Mardik's strength and size, he would most likely do the level change, go for that double leg takedown, slam someone down, get past the knees, passing the guard, and pinning them in mount. Now, in Valetido or MMA, this is probably the most dangerous position to be in. Because this is the position where the fight will just end. The fight's done at this point. Because now, somebody's just going to beat you with their fists. So it's just a matter of time. And any attempt to escape from this position will just leave you more vulnerable. Hence the, the submissions here. You can see Craig Murdoch attacks the body and the ribs in order to get that top headlock slash guillotine submission. And as discussed earlier, grabbing the back of the head, bashing it into the ground, that's probably the fight over. Realistically, Craig Murdoch's entire game plan would lead up to this point, getting into mount and pounding away. Which is usually the case with all the strong wrestler types in MMA. I think the closest real life example we can get is Brock Lesnar or Khabib. And if we just give them a better kicking ability, that could be a more accurate representation of Craig Murdoch's fighting style. So just use some dirty boxing, use it to get into the double leg takedown, smash, and when the opponent's left vulnerable, go for the submission. That's only, of course, if the opponent survives the mauling that they've been receiving. So just to summarize, Craig Mordek's entire game plan would be close the distance, take them down, pin them in mount, and smash away. And probably to do some pro wrestling moves to just show off his strength and size because, you know, screw you little people. This brings us to the end of our video. Did you guys learn anything? Are there any details that I'm leaving out here? Please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time. Keep safe.